everyone, I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about travel and technology, two of my favorite things in the entire world. I am so, so excited about today's review, but I need to start this out with a story. I go to CES every single year and I bring this backpack with me. It's my Peak Design backpack. It fits all of my technology that I need to do my videography review. I do all of my interviews, I do all of my segments from the show floor. Everything that I do at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, happens because of this bag. This bag ends up carrying about 20 pounds of stuff and that includes a travel tripod. And the travel tripod that I usually use is the Mi Photo travel tripod. So the reason why I've been using that one for so long is because it's generally lightweight, you know, it's a little bit over three pounds and it fits in one of these little baggies. But the problem is, even though it fits in one of these, it kind of flops around whenever you stick it in there. And even though I can tie it up with some of the straps that Peak Design has on the backpack, it still hits people when I'm walking through those crowded hallways. I am so sorry to everybody that I have like slapped in the face with my tripod. I don't mean to. I just have to get from one place to another very quickly at CES, and sometimes it happens. So I am so sorry. <laughs> well, hopefully if you see me at CES this year, I won't end up punching you in the face with a tripod because I have an answer that has solved my problem. Behold, a bag, ta-da, yay. It actually has something very important inside of here. Let me see if I can get this thing out. There we go, okay. This is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. This thing isn't even out on the market yet, but they invited me over to their retail store to get a overview of the product and to check it out in person. And they sent me home with one so that I'm able to do a long-term review with it and able to show you all of the different things that are really cool about this awesome little device. As usual, this review is not sponsored because I don't do sponsored reviews. And even if I did, you would know because I actually read the FCC guidelines as opposed to a lot of YouTubers out there. Yeah, I have them memorized because I'm a nerd. So let's go ahead and start talking about this thing. They've been working on it for four years. It is very, very space efficient, which you can tell if you just look at it dead on straight through the camera. It's pretty fancy. Now, as I mentioned before, my big problem was smacking people in the face at DEF CON. So how do I solve that problem? Well, this one is actually about the same diameter as a water bottle. It is much, much smaller than any of the tripods that I've seen out on the market for travel tripods. And trust me, I have checked out all of them. So it actually fits with all three legs inside of this little baggie on the side, which is usually for water bottles. And I can still use the strap to tie it on so it doesn't flop around. But that's the thing. All of the legs stick in there, it takes up so much less space that I don't have to worry about the width being much wider than that. So to give you some specs, this thing is 3.25 inches in diameter and at full extension height, it goes to 60 inches tall. Now the other problem that I've had with my Photo tripod is that it uses the little like screw clamps to open and close or extend and then shut the legs. And it takes a long time for those to open and close. As you can see here, I have to use each one manually and I have to open and close them, screw them, and then make sure that all of them are closed so that one of the legs doesn't fall out of my camera once I put my camera on top of the tripod. I had no way of telling if they were actually all closed. You just kind of had to memorize which ones you actually had clamped shut and which ones you had still open. So this one uses fast deploying cam levers, which are completely different and you've probably seen on some other tripods on the market. This has made it much, much faster to deploy. So when I'm going to those conferences and doing those interviews, I don't have to have an interviewee waiting for me to, you know, get my tripod all set up to actually start the interview. I can just bing bang and it's done in as little as I think Peak Design said somebody in the office did it in like nine seconds. I'm not at that point where I can do it in nine seconds, but hopefully soon I'm gonna practice. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and go to the top to give you like a whole overview of this. First off, the feet don't adjust, so they are just standard where they are positioned. Luckily, they do have a nice little like groove. So when you do have the legs extended and kind of spread out, uh, they do sit flat on the ground, which is great. Once you get your legs extended to the places that you want them to be, uh, you also have these really fancy little leg angle selectors, and those are really easy to use. You just push them, raise them up, and then close them, and they will clamp into place automatically and shut. And those keep your legs extended to the positioning that they should be at 
whenever you have this ready to go as a tripod. The ball head at the top has a single adjustment ring and this allows it to do like 360 degrees of adjustments. It also has this plate at the top, which it does include the plate, and it is compatible with Arca Swiss tripod dimensions and Peak Designs carrying equipment. So like if you already have like a camera clip capture, you can use it with that too. Um, I have one of those. I actually took it horseback riding and my camera survived. It was really cool. Uh, but you can totally put that on here too. You just take out the two pins and then you can just slide in a bigger plate if you need to. Now the ball head is awesome. Also 3.25 inches in diameter so you don't gain any extra like cir circumference. It doesn't get any bigger volumetrically just because of the ball head which is good. Now one thing I will mention and this is a concern of mine is that there is no fluid head for videographers or if you want to take like a panorama photo there's no fluid head that just keeps it in place uh, you know horizontally and or vertically so that you can get that really smooth panorama shot. But with that said they did mention when I went to the retail store and they also mentioned on the Kickstarter that it does it is compatible with universal mounts. So there is no panning built in but there is a $20 camera panning base that will work with it and that one's over on Amazon so I will most likely be purchasing that so that I can get really nice fluid shots whenever I'm trying to take b-roll. The locking ring on the top does give you some extra security but it will stay locked in place without it too. Um, I noticed it just kind of jiggles from one side to the other whenever you don't have it locked into place so usually I will just move over the lever anyway just for that you know comfort and security and peace of mind. Now when you do extend the center column uh, you will notice that it has three different ways that it can go into a panorama mode. My favorite if the camera is facing away from you, like as if you're, you know, taking photos, is if you tilt it over to the left so that your so that your handle ends up being at the top. It's much easier to hold and much easier to position that way. You can also flip your camera upside down for overhead shots in inverted mode and in order to do that you just unscrew the little hook that's in the center because yes it does include a hook and then you take out the whole center piece, the center column, you stick it in backwards and then you stick the hook on the top and then you screw it back into place so that it's nice and tight. Uh, that's pretty much it. It also has a low mode for ground level shots too which is cool and I do want to mention though be careful with this center lever knob thing right here because if you unscrew it all the way accidentally or if you just like keep on going it's kind of hard to put it all the way back in like screw it back into place I, I feel like it like got stuck on something so I just take it out ever so slightly so that I can move this up and down and then I screw it back into place and push it in so that it's not you know hanging out and hitting people some other things I did want to mention is there is a bubble level right here and it's yellow. However, unfortunately, your camera lens will cover that up whenever you have the camera mounted. So you can only use that when you don't have a camera sitting on top of it. So I would say make sure your tripod is level first and then stick your camera on it. The universal phone mount is one of my favorite things and people probably think this is a little ridiculous, but hey, give me credit, okay? The 3A, the Google Pixel 3A, just included time-lapse mode on their camera system and it is getting backwards compatible to like the 3XL and everything. So taking time-lapse videos is going to be so easy especially if you're on the go and you're just trying to make a quick vlog for example you can just use the phone mount you don't have to bring an extra one and stick it on top of the tripod that's great that's really really useful for youtubers so the hook as i mentioned is mostly just for counterweights but you can twist and lock that into place to take out that universal phone mount and it magnetically attaches to the phone mount whenever it's stored. I was a little worried like once I put my phone mount in there I was like oh my god how am I gonna get it out ever again. It's magnetic so it's fine it always comes back out. The other thing I wanted to mention is I do struggle with this case however they did tell me that the case will be ever so slightly larger to help people get the tripod inside the case a lot easier because right now it's just a little bit too tight on the tripod which does make it kind of tough and it means that I would likely not use the case. Um, so hopefully once the actual one goes into production after the Kickstarter they will have a slightly larger case for the tripod but it does come with the case which is very very nice and it also comes with a little pouch for Oh my god, if you have big fingers, good luck getting your hex key out of the case. Okay, it comes with a hex key because in order to screw the little plate onto your camera, you need a hex key like this one. 
But luckily, if you do keep it in the case, it ain't gonna go anywhere. I tried to get this thing to fall out, it didn't fall out, so I'm pretty satisfied with where it goes. So last off, they do have two different tripods that you can choose from. There is carbon effin fiber, which is awesome, and they also have aluminum, which is the one that I have here. So the carbon fiber one does look a little bit different from the aluminum one. Yes, it is gorgeous. I think it's very pretty, and I'm definitely going to get one of those in my hands. That one weighs less than three pounds. It's 2.81 pounds. The aluminum one is 3.44 pounds, but both of those can hold 20 pounds easily, just fine. In fact, I was trying to like push this thing to the sh side with my body weight and the thing was not moving, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure it goes over 20 pounds easily. So those are gonna MSRP at $600, $599.95 to be specific, and $349.95 for aluminum. Uh, however, if you get them on the Kickstarter, you save a crap load of money. It's $4.79 for the carbon fiber version and $2.89 for the aluminum version. So this one would be $2.89, carbon fiber would be $4.79. Um, I am definitely going to grab one of the carbon fiber ones off of the Kickstarter myself. And I do want to mention too, I have a referral link down below. So if you want to get one through the Kickstarter, please use that because it does support me and it helps me pay for new equipment for this studio. Oh, and last but not least, there's a lifetime guarantee, which is pretty dope because I am known to destroy my tripods and it would be really nice to just be able to send it back and be like, hey, can you fix this? And they'll be like, sure, no problem. And then you don't have to pay like an extra $600 after the Kickstarter for another carbon fiber tripod. So that's good. Thanks, Peak Design. <laughs> so I think the Peak Design travel tripod is amazing. Um, I'm going to buy one, just like I said, and I'm so excited to get a second one in stock because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up like replacing my current tripod lineup with these. So I can't wait. <laughs> I am finally fixing that problem that I've had at CES for years. And honestly, when you're my size and you are carrying around 20 pounds of equipment, it really makes your CES like a crap fest. So I am very excited to have something that will bring me a little bit more positivity to my CES experience and all of my other convention experiences for that case. Well, I hope that you enjoyed my review. Don't forget, again, the link to the Kickstarter is right down below, and that is a referral link, which gives me just a little bit of a kickback, and that does help me with building this studio, because with any studio build, you do have to purchase a lot of equipment. So I do appreciate any of the support. And comment below if you have any questions about this travel tripod. Uh, I thought it was really cool, and I am more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Again, my name is Shannon Morris, and I will see you next time very soon. I have a lot of videos coming up this month. Bye!